Hey everyone, we have now performed two different types of tasks in deep learning that is multi-class classification and binary classification. In this video and in the next few videos, we are going to perform the task of regression. In case of regression, the target output for which we are trying to predict is in the form of real numbers compared to the discrete values in the case of multi-class classification or binary values in case of binary classification. And to do this task of regression, we are going to make use of Boston House Prices data set which is available as part of SKLearn library. So to start with, let's import the data set. Here as a first step, I'm importing my necessary libraries. I'm importing my TensorFlow library, NumPy library, Matplotlib library and Pandas library. I'm going to execute this cell. Okay, all the necessary libraries has been imported. And I'm going to display the version of my TensorFlow that has been imported. So the version that I'm using is 2.3.0. Now as a next step, I'm going to import the data set. As I said already, this data set is available inside the sklearn library itself. Hence, I have written as from sklearn.datasets import load underscore boston. And to load the data set, I have written as boston is equal to load underscore boston. This load underscore boston is a function. When I call this function that is load underscore boston, this is going to generate an object. So this object I am naming as Boston. Okay, I'm going to execute this. So this will load the data set from my SKLearn library. As a next step, I'm going to display the description of my data set that I have just loaded. For that, I have written as boston.descr. Let me just execute this cell guys. Okay, I have the output that looks like this. The description says Boston house prices data set and it has 506 instances. That means I'm having the data for 506 instances. In other words, 506 homes. And the number of attributes are 13. Here 13 refers to the number of columns. So for each instance, I'm having 13 column details. And as the last column, the last column is called as MEDV, which refers to median value of owner occupied homes in $1,000. So this is the output column for which we are trying to generate the predictions. And we are going to generate the predictions based on the 13 columns. The 13 columns can be CRIM which refers to per capita crime rate per town. And the RM refers to number of rooms per dwelling. See it says average number of rooms per dwelling. Likewise in total I am having 13 columns as the input data. And the last column that is MEDV is the target variable for which we are trying to generate the predictions. Okay, so this is about the data set that we are going to work with. Now to get the data from this data object that is Boston, I'm going to write as x is equal to boston.data. I'm just going to execute this. So this will transfer all the input data to my variable x. And as a next step, I have written as y is equal to boston.target. So once I execute this, this will transfer all the target values into the variable called y. As a next step, I'm creating a data frame. For creating the data frame, I have written as df is equal to pd.dataframe x comma columns is equal to boston.feature underscore names. If I simply call this value that is boston.feature underscore names, let me create a cell and execute it and show you guys. Here I'm writing as boston.feature underscore names. If I just execute this, see this will display the list of feature names that are present in my data set. So what it means is create a data frame with the values present in X. Here X refers to the values for the input data. So with the values present in X with the column names as feature names. Okay. And if I just execute this, so this will create the data frame. If I display my data frame df, so df.head, see this has created a data frame with 13 columns and the feature names as the column names. Now for this data frame, I'm adding one more column as target and I'm setting the value of y. So let me just execute this. And if I display my data frame now, see the column target has been added to my data frame df. So this is how it looks like. Okay, we have the data set ready. Now as a next step, I'm going to perform the split between training data and the test data. 
For that, I am making use of train test function, which is present inside the sklearn.model underscore selection. Hence, I have first imported as from sklearn.model underscore selection import train test split. After that, I am performing the split as train data comma test data train targets comma test targets is equal to train test split and I have specified my input data as well as my target data. If this is confusing, what you can do is instead of writing the logic like this, you can simply specify it as x comma y because x contains the input data and the y contains the output values. So you can simply write x x comma y test size is equal to 0 0.3 and the random underscore state is equal to 42 so that you get the same split as I'm getting just now. Let me just execute this. Okay, so this has performed the split between training data and the test data. If I display my training data, it is in the form of NumPy array. And if I display the shapes of my training data and the test data, training data has the shape of 354, 13. And the test data is having the shape of 152,13. That means 354 instances in my training data and 152 instances in my test data. If I display the type of my training data, this is obviously in the form of NumPy array. And if I display the training targets, so the training targets are nothing but the value of the output target. If I just execute this, the training targets is also a NumPy array which contains the value of the houses in $1,000. For example, 28.7 refers to $28.7,000 of that particular house. And if I display the test targets, this is how it looks like. Okay, so we have the data set ready with us and we have also split the data set as training data and the test data. Now the next step that we are going to do is data normalization. Now why should we do that? Don't worry, I'll explain it shortly. Now let me call the describe method on my data frame df. If I call the describe method on my data frame df, okay, this has displayed the statistical description of my data set. Now observe the column CRIM, that is the crime rate. Here it says the minimum value is 0.006320 and the maximum value is 88.976. Now observe the value of CHAS. It is having the minimum as zero and the maximum as one. So if you take the other column of tax, minimum value is 187 and the maximum value is 711. If I come over here, here the minimum value is 0 0.320 for the column B and the maximum value is 396. So what it means is each column has a different different range in which values are present. So that means if we want to perform the linear regression task effectively, we have to perform the normalization on my entire data set. Here to perform the normalization, I am making use of standard scalar function which is available inside the sklearn library. Hence, I have first imported my standard scalar. So from sklearn.preprocessing import standard scalar. And after this, I'm initializing my standard scalar and transforming that is fit and transform on my training data. And then using those learned values on my training data, I'm just performing the transform on my test data. So let me just remove it because it's not necessary for now. Okay. And if I just execute this, okay, my transform training data and the transform test data are now having the same shape that is 354,13 and 152,13. Now let's look at the result of this normalization. Now whenever we apply the transformation using standard scalar on our data, what it would do is it would transform the data such a way that it will have the mean as zero and standard deviation as one. So let's test whether we have the same values or not. Here what I'm doing is I'm calling the mean along axis is equal to zero on my transform train data. If I just execute this, See, this transformation has resulted in the value of each column with mean as zero. Can you observe it? Each value is close to zero. Hence, we can say as the mean is equal to zero. And if I compute the standard deviation for each of the column, the standard deviation for each of the column is one. So what I can say is we have performed the transformation on our data set such that we have the mean as zero and the standard deviation as one. And to do this, we have made use of standard scalar function, which is available inside the sklearn library.
okay and if i display the transform train data i now have the values like this after performing the transformation so i'll stop the video here and in the next video let's build a neural network and apply this transform data